Hi, I'm going to show you how I read an academic article, and this will hopefully help you read academic articles for the right things. I do this because it's been shown that a lot of students will read articles for the wrong things, and because of that, not get out of them what they need to get out of them. Specifically, they tend to read for facts, whereas in this course anyway, we want you to read for arguments. And I'm going to show you how to do that with a sample article here. Now, most of the articles for our class come in PDF, so I'll show you how you can do it with a PDF, but similar principles would apply to a Word document. The article is called Socially Assistive Robots. I'm going to scroll down to the beginning, and the first thing I always do is read the abstract right here near the top. That's going to give you an idea of what the article is about, an overview. It helps to start with that because it's going to give you some sense of what you should be reading for, the general turns in the argument. So here I see that this article is about socially assistive robots and ethical issues that they raise. It says it's going to talk about a number of different ethical challenges and it's going to connect these with four medical ethics principles. So those are the things I'm going to look for in this article. Another helpful thing to do is before you read an article, just read the headings. This will give you a sense of how it's put together. So I see, for instance, the first heading is socially assistive robots. So it basically just tells you what these things are, gives you a definition. Then it goes to core ethical principles, and then it starts talking about some of the issues they raise. So I start, and it provides a definition of socially assistive robot. It says these robots provide social interaction rather than physical interaction. Okay, I think that's an important definition. That's an important distinction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to comment. I'm going to put a comment right here. I'm going to say that SAR means robots that provide social interaction rather than physical interaction. Now, notice something here. I'm writing out the comment. I'm not using the highlighting feature. It's been demonstrated that you retain content when you study by writing it out better than you can by highlighting it. I know a lot of people like to highlight as a shortcut, but it simply doesn't stick in your head as much. So you should be writing it out. One thing this forces you to do is summarize it, put it in your own words, which is exactly what you're going to have to do when you write a paper on it. So it's a good idea to get in the practice of doing that. It will also help you when you come back and look for different points in the article to use to develop your own paper. I'm going to show you something. I just made a comment. Now if I click comment on the top right, it's going to show that comment. It's going to start drawing a line of comments. This is an important feature because when I open the article later on, I can just start clicking the comments and start seeing what are the major points and be taken right to those points. When you click a comment, it takes you right to where you put that in. So this is going to be very helpful when it comes to making your paper. Now I'm going to scroll farther down. I'm skipping a little bit because I'm not going to actually read the article word for word. It would take a long time. I've already read it a bit. As I come down, I see the four core ethical principles. So I'll put a NAR comment in. I'll say four core ethical principles. And at this point, what I would do is write each one and summarize them. And again, I won't go through the entire process for you, but you should put things in your own words. Now we're in the section where it starts talking about what the issues are. And here, I find the first major issue. It says that users can become attached and after the robot's taken away, have attachment issues, miss the robot. I'll just give it a title, issue one. Even though the author doesn't do it, it'll help me organize it later on. I'll say users can have attachment issues when their robot is removed. Now, it's also a good idea to ask questions as you go along because of course you're gonna be asked to critique the article Plus, you're going to understand it better if you read an article with a question mindset. When I see that, the first thing I say to myself is, but how is that different from having an attachment issue to anybody, a nurse? Let's imagine the person has a nurse in the hospital for a long time, leaves a hospital, could have the same issue. So how is that different? What I do, just to indicate it's my own thought, I put MS for myself, and just what I use. You can do the same thing or something different. So I'll say... How is that different from attachment with the person? Now I've already got my critique right here. When I go to write it out later on for an assignment, it's already there. Here's another issue, we'll call it issue two. 
And this says that the uh, patient could be deceived into believing the robot's human. Now, it'd be nice to find out why that's a problem. Okay, they think it's human. What's the real problem there? So I'm going to look for that as it go down. Now here, it provides that problem. It says the problem is that the human may tell the robot medical information thinking it's getting to a human. Here I might say issue two problem, tell the robot important medical information. Up here we see issue three, the robot could replace humans and leave the patient more isolated from human contact. So I'll say issue three, robot replaces humans and leaves humans more isolated from other humans. Now when I go back, I'm not simply going to use my own notes. I'll use my notes to find the original text in the article and then I'll reword it according to what seems appropriate for what I'm writing. This is mostly just to find the location in the article where the points are made. And finally, moving down, we have the interesting issue of responsibility for error. That is, if the robot makes an error, who's responsible? The care team that could have put a nurse on the site rather than the robot, the person who programmed the robot, maybe the program was faulty, the person who's supposed to maintain the robot, things like that. So I'm here, I'm actually going to add myself. This is a big issue or an important issue. Now just remind me that I'm going to explore it more if I have to write about it. Now one last thing I'm going to do is briefly summarize it at the very top with one more comment. Uh, and here I'm actually going to give it a little bit of evaluation. I might say, uh, do I think it's a good article, bad article? And I think it's an okay article. So I might say why it's valuable. And I'll say good discussion of ethical issues involving use of robots in care settings. So later on, when I'm looking for help in writing an article, I can just look at this first comment and I'll see what's in here. I'll know if this is an article I want to continue with or if it's not going to be helpful. So it's really good to just have a brief summary. And with that, you save it. And you should have a nice outline already built of the article that will help you quite a bit when it comes to making your own paper and writing your own essays and defending your own position. Once again, note that I wasn't looking for details of information, the date something happened, the hospital where something happened, things like that. I was looking for general points. And I was also reading very actively thinking about objections, problems with the argument, thinking about how points were defended, things like that. That's what you should be reading for, and that's what you should be making notes on. Thanks.